What's up guys? I'm here for July's Q&A. If you're new to my channel, I do a Q&A every month and you tweet me at musicisWin and use the hashtag AskTyler so I can find and organize all of your questions. So feel free to do that at any time. Now, let's jump into the questions. Joykuspot123 asks, how much you pay for the green PRS SC245? I paid my soul. <laughs> Calidius asks, hey Tyler, Q, I don't get why a lot of people like Hendrix. Can you tell me why they do? If you have to ask, you'll never know. Kyle asks, if you could take one guitarist and have him teach you all of his tricks and secrets, who would it be? It would be my future self. Blank asks, at what age did you decide that you wanted to be a musician? I never decided. It just happened. Does anybody really decide they want to be a musician? Or is there something inside us that's pulling us towards our destiny. I guess if I had to pick an age, it would be like uh, 12. Sarjan Ojanal asks, if you ever had the chance to create your own PRS signature guitar, what would you name it? Hmm, that's a good question. I would name it Soul Hammer. Because the licks that would come out of it would hammer your soul. Zachary Uzumaki asks, Dear Tyler, I am trying to start up a guitar channel, but I'm not exactly sure what to do. Could you give me some advice? Thanks, Zach. Zach, I can't give you any specific advice, but I can give you some overarching advice that applies to not just creating a guitar YouTube channel, but I think any YouTube channel. There are three pillars that you must follow in order to succeed, and they are consistency, authenticity, and quality. If you have those three things and you continue to follow those pillars, then you will succeed. If you have the quality, like you're good at what you do, then that's not always enough. If you have authenticity and you are very direct and passionate about what you do, it's not always enough. If you have consistency, you're posting all the, all the time and you have a schedule that people can expect from you, it's not always enough. If you have all three of those things, however, I've found that you can rise up after a lot of work. It doesn't happen overnight. So don't give up, dude. I bet you can do it if you follow those three things. Good luck. Matt asks, if you didn't go to Berkeley, do you think you could have learned as much from home on an online course? Uh, when I was at Berkeley, no, I would not have been able to learn as much. However, now you can definitely learn just as much online uh, regarding the knowledge. You can't gain the experience unless you were at a school like Berkeley, but as far as the knowledge goes, there are tons of resources. The internet is huge now. My course, Guitar Super System, which is linked in the description, is basically what I wish I would have had as a study aid at Berkeley. That's how I created that course, was basically everything I learned semester by semester is condensed into these courses. So I use that as really a study guide. Like I use my courses as practice routines for my own maintenance as a guitar player. So the short answer is no, I couldn't have learned as much then, but if I was choosing to go to Berkeley now, online courses are a great alternative. Donald J. Trump asks, how do I stop playing the same licks over and over again when improvising? I learn the scale shapes, but can't make up new licks. Yes, getting stuck in the boxes, so to speak, that's something that we all struggle with when we're kind of learning to break out of scale shapes, just like you said. I think the best thing to do is to slow down, take a breath, leave space, don't feel like you have to be constantly making noise with your guitar. That's the hardest thing to do as a guitar player is to not play. So if you give yourself a chance to breathe and think about what you wanna play next, maybe you won't be so quick to move into your same licks and maybe you'll find a new place on the neck and hit a wrong note and bend it into a right note. There are no mistakes on the guitar, there are only learning experiences. Unless you're playing in like Prince or Sting's band. Suck Big asks, top three albums of all time? It's too hard to answer this question off the top of my head and this is not my definitive answer, but I'm gonna use my iTunes library to see what the top three most played albums so like the aggregation of songs. So according to my iTunes, Audio Slave, their debut album, is one of them. And Incubus, A Crow Left of the Murder, is another one. And John Mayer, The Search for Everything, is another one. I wouldn't say those are my top three, but those are my recent 
albums that I've been spending a lot of time listening to, apparently. Victor Lundsgaard asks, Would you rather only listen to For the Love of God for the rest of your life or all the bad pop songs in the world? Mm, that's a tough one. I mean, I love For the Love of God, don't get me wrong, but I can't listen to the same song forever no matter what it is. I'm gonna have to go with the pop songs. At least I can treat them like backing tracks and rip over them. <laughs> but uh, I will do that choice reluctantly. Edgar Truyo asks, is it piezo, like a pie, or piezo? I've heard it both ways, but wanna make sure I'm saying it correct. It's piezo. Colin Jones says, I play acoustic, but I'm seriously thinking about getting an electric. Besides Gibson or Fender, what are some great electric brands? <sighs> can't think of any other brands I would recommend. Maybe you guys can leave a comment on uh, what brand you think I might recommend other than Gibson or Fender. Sean Francisco asks, what are some modern blues guitarists that you can recommend besides John Mayer and Keith Urban? Modern blues meaning they're active right now, I suppose. Well, Joe Bonamassa just tweeted out that he finished his solo album, so I'm gonna be on the lookout for that. I'd also recommend Eric Gales. He's a left-handed guitar player who plays a right-handed guitar flipped upside down, so like the high E string is on the top, and the way he plays, you gotta watch it. Duncan asks, do you have any hobbies when you aren't doing music? If so, what are they? Other hobbies include uh, watching movies and TV shows and drinking beer. I'm a connoisseur of craft beer. Renato Quiros Rojas asks, is there an actual need to buy a better guitar when you become a more advanced guitar player? There's not a need, uh, but there is a sense of accomplishment, like you're rewarding yourself for all your hard work. Having a better guitar allows you to play better and appreciate your gear, you know, makes you want to pick up the guitar even more than you already have to reach to your advanced stage. So yeah, buy a new guitar the next time you hit a new peak or pinnacle in your guitar playing. Kramal Hera asks, how do I find my guitar tone? Wait, wait, there it is. Oh wait, no. It's right here, it's in the fingers. Guitar tone is in the fingers. Flamboyant Walrus asks, you can only use one singular pedal for a gig other than a tuner. What would it be? Oh man, this is a tough one. You guys know how much I love guitar pedals and all that fun stuff. It would have to be some kind of delay pedal, I think, because I would use the amp for gain and hopefully that amp has built-in reverb, but really, as long as I have a gain channel, then I'm not gonna pick a distortion pedal. I would definitely go with delay to complement the distortion. Distortion and delay, my child. If you want my recommendation on some of my favorite delay pedals that I personally use, this is the Keeley Mag Echo. This is the Wampler Faux Tape Echo, and this is the Nemesis Delay from Source Audio. I've used all these pedals in different videos, so go find them on my YouTube channel. Dalton Thomas asks, is there a difference between knowing the caged method and the three notes per string method? Yes, one of them conforms to three notes per string when you were constructing a scale shape, and the other one is a little bit more Ergonomic is the wrong word. It's it's more conducive for people who are sight reading and relying on notation as in positional playing. So there's two types of ways to construct scales, caged and three notes per string. I teach three note per string just because there's not a lot of guitar players out there who are looking to sight read. A lot more people are interested in improvising and constructing their own music and being able to play over whatever they want to as, as opposed to opening up a book and ripping through some jazz standards. So while both of them are important, the three notes per string method is much more popular and useful for 95% of guitar players and Joe Satriani, Paul Gilbert, Steve Vai, John Petrucci, all those dudes subscribe to the three notes per string method. Curtis asks, what did you have for breakfast this morning? I have a picture, would you like to see? Why yes, that is sriracha. Shane May asks, what advice can you give for pinch harmonics? I seem to be struggling. Shane, if you go to the YouTube search bar and you type in pinch harmonics, music is win, you'll get a video that will show you how to do pinch harmonics from this guy. Or you can take my course, Modern Rock Guitar Techniques, which is linked down below, to get an even more intricate, in-depth breakdown with camera angles galore 
as well as a billion other videos on techniques. Okay, billion might be stretching it, but you get what I'm saying. Nico Schnur asks, if you could hang out and jam with any guitarist, dead included, who would that be? Oh man, I think I would want to jam with Paul Gilbert. Every jam video I've seen with him uh, playing with other musicians, it just seems like it's the most fun thing in the world. So I would want to jam with Paul Gilbert. Hey Paul, call me man. Divakar Sharma asks, confusion. If I buy GSS, Guitar Super System, will it be delivered to me via courier or will I get a soft copy? P.S. I live in India. Guitar Super System is streaming online, so all you need is an internet connection and you can use your computer or a tablet or your phone with the Udemy app. So yeah, click on the link below if you want to sign up. Iconoclast asks, can you tell us about your worst guitar experience, whatever that may mean to you? Yeah, one time I was playing in a big amphitheater and not only was my band that was on the bill expected to like bring a crowd of people, which we did not, uh, my guitar pedal board like shorted out during the performance and then it shorted out my guitar itself so my whole rig was worthless and I was in front of all these people and I was it was when I was in college so I had no real experience playing in front of a ton of people or performing so it was a nightmare and I basically just walked around the stage trying to plug stuff in and uh, I eventually borrowed the other band's guitar player's guitar and it was a Les Paul that had really high action and it was poorly set up. The gig was terrible. Sebastian Bayou asks, Tyler, can you do a full review of that four-in-one -one multi effect guitar pedal called Veloton Dapper? I have no idea what that is and I don't own it, so sorry. Young Chugga Chuggin asks, can I ask you a question? Well, I believe you just did, sir. All right, guys, that's gonna do it for this month's Q&A. Thank you very much for watching. Another month will come and you will have another chance to ask your questions, so stay tuned for that. Also, there may be a little announcement on Monday for a little swag I may be giving away from a certain company that houses some of my guitars and other items. So tune in on Monday for a little possible treat. Until then, keep shredding.